Granny! Dog! Wishes always to my little lost lamb. His name. It was Kamansky, then. Doug Kamansky. He used to call me Doug. Doug Kamansky. Yeah. I was fifteen. I was bussing tables at. The Deja Vu nightclub. In Houston. And I, I would talk to you every chance that I got. And, and you listened to all my problems. And you'd give me advice. You... You used to talk to me about the girl that you were in love... Her, her parents wouldn't let you see her? Caroline. Oh, my God, Douglas, that was... That was over 15 years ago. Oh, to me, it was yesterday. I, I would talk to you about my feelings for Caroline and... And how I resented her parents. Well, you were the only person left in the world that I could talk to. I remember. I remember. You had just lost your mother. I, oh, you were so... Oh, I was so concerned for you. I've never forgotten him. After you left Deja Vu, my life changed. But I always, I kept... Every memory, every clipping, every photograph, the, the piece from your feather boa, oh the my apricot God. rose. No, I, I can't believe it. All of this time, you, you're the one who's been sending me all of those gifts. Yes, yes, tokens of my love for you. Hints that I was back. I was waiting for the perfect time to let you know that it was me. I, I know that you were worried by all of this, and I'm sorry. But now you know. And I don't have to keep my feelings for you a secret. One second longer. My mom is dead. See, and Caroline's parents are trying everything they can to keep me away from her. They, they've sent her to boarding school. See, I am completely alone. And, and 
then suddenly there you were in my life like some kind of a miracle. Yes, listen to me. Kimberly Don't. Sullivan was there listening you to me. You misunderstood. Know, I don't think there was a single time in my life my when intent. I needed to talk to you. I was just there. trying you to cared help you. About you, were... me. you loved me like no one. It's just that you were so lost. That's why you wrote that in that picture about my being your little lost lamb, right? I can't tell you how that made me feel. Honey, that was 15 years ago. You, you, you told me, though, that, that if I believed in something, that I could make it happen. And you were right. I mean, first with Caroline, and then here you are. You're back in my life again, just as I believed you would be. I'm never going to let you go again. I want you to listen to me. Listen to me. Many things have changed since we you had those talks. You remember when I followed you to New no. Orleans, to that no. club, Low Bear? No, you know, I, yes, don't of course you do. I don't Just remember. I went backstage, and, and, and you talked to me for a long time, and you gave me that linen handkerchief, the one that I sent to you this morning, and that, that's when I took the key to your dressing room, see? And then when I came here and I, and I built this room to you, I figured that would be the best way to, to lock my feelings away from people who wouldn't understand. You, you remember every you last know, I, detail? I, I really believe that, that when Caroline's parents died in that fire, that's when I knew that you were right, that I could have anything that I wanted. I, I changed my name to Cummings. I made myself over again. I worked out with weights to, to improve my... I don't even think that... You, that that, 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 that that you recognized me, did you? You're right, I have no idea. You know, I have to tell you, though, that uh, Caroline, my life with her was every bit as perfect as I knew it would be. And when she died, I, I just thought I could not go on. Oh, but you I... did. Think about it. You did. You managed to go on. And that was oh, just... Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Marcia helped me. She sent me to Dr. Strauss. And, uh... And he told me to go to go on that cruise where I saw you again, where, where we went for a walk up on the deck and you were singing and, you know, I knew then that it was, it was fate. That fate had brought your love and your support back to me again. And, and if I needed any further proof, I mean, you were singing the very same song that, that you were then. And not only that, I, I taped that one night at the club. Where do you hear this? Where do you see this? I took this film. It took me months to save up enough money to buy that hand camera, but I'm telling you, it was worth it. You know, after I saw you on that ship, that's when I decided to come here and open the restaurant. It seemed the perfect way for me to be near you again. And then fate stepped in, and Lisa McCall in introduced me to your stepdaughter, Fran. Douglas. Douglas. Where is Franny? In the bedroom. Waiting. I built this room. To keep my, to keep my memories of her alive, to keep my feelings alive, until I could let her know. It's all gonna work out, you know, just the way I planned it. We're gonna go to Acapulco, we are. And uh, Kim and Bob, they're gonna join us there.
course you are. Of course you are. It's all planned. You and Franny and I are going to leave now, and then Dr. Hughes Dr. will Hughes come later. Dr. Hughes is Kim, that, that phone doesn't work. See, I... I can't let you leave now, now that you finally know it. Not at my... <laughs> Calm down. Honey, don't panic. There's a way to get out of here. We just have to... Okay. The elevator. I have the, key. I have the key to the elevator. Doug gave it to me. <laughs> I was right to come back here. Douglas, are you all right? Franny, you said you loved me. Why would you try to hurt me? Kim, why, are you, why were you trying to run away? Doug, please leave us alone. What? No, no don't, don't you know I, I would never hurt you? Let us go. Tell Marcia to put Douglas, away the gun. we must hurry. Time is running out. Elaine saw the picture of Dr. Strauss in the paper and went to the police. It won't be long before they get access to your medical records and all our secrets will come to light. Douglas, there's not a moment to lose. We have to leave now. No, Marcia, that's not in the plan. Listen to me. It's too dangerous to bring them with us. I want you to take them into your secret room and close off the partition. We've got to make sure they're not discovered before we're safely out of our No, Marcia, no. Yes. We can go someplace wonderful where we, where we can build a new life together. No, that is not in the plan. I'm not going anywhere without Kim and Franny. Marcia, is your car still parked by the bridge? Yes. What we're going to have to do is go out through the terrace and down the fire escape and leave out back. First, close off the secret room. All right. Marcia, heaven's sakes, you can't do this. You can't go along with him. He's sick. He needs professional help. I suggest you lower your voice, Mrs. Hughes. It won't be a very pleasant trip if Douglas hears you say that. Now move. One sound out of either of you, and I promise it will be your last. Make yourselves comfortable. Please sit down. I'm sorry about the gun, but it's a necessary precaution until we're safely off the ground. You don't think you're going to be able to kidnap us and get away with it? I suggest you listen very carefully if you value your lives. Why should we listen to you? Because I'm all you have right now. Now listen. You have to go along with everything Douglas asks you to do. His mental state is very precarious at the moment and it will be extremely dangerous to antagonize him. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Good. Now, the first opportunity I get, I'll see that you're released, unharmed, but I can't do that unless you cooperate. Marcia, you can't go along with this. Doug's sick. He needs help. I'm the only one who can help him now. You... You aren't helping him. You're just feeding his twisted fantasies. I have no choice. You most certainly do have a choice. You could talk him into turning back, turning himself in, and getting some decent help. That's not a viable option now. Why not? Doctors, with all of their good intentions, they take away his life, and I can't ever let that happen. Oh, that's the most ridiculous thing. Sit down. is ridiculous. There are specialists, doctors who would understand his problem. They'd know how to treat him. They'd give him his life back, not take it away. You still don't understand, do you? Douglas will go to any lengths to protect his plans for you. That's why he killed Marie Kovac and Cal Randolph. 
Nothing on heaven or earth could stop him now. Don't kill Marie and Cal. Yes. Why? Because of you and his dream for Kim. Franny, don't you remember how many times I tried to discourage your continued involvement with Douglas? No, I thought you... You were. thought I was jealous. You were. Oh, Franny, if only you'd hated me less and well, trusted me more. Why didn't you tell her the truth? I warned her time and time again, but I even tried to help her patch things up with Kevin. But she foolishly chose to ignore all of my advice. But you didn't tell her this. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies. Our flight plan is filed, we're cleared, and ready for takeoff. The sooner we get out of here, the better. I apologize for the suddenness of our departure, but I promise I'm going to do everything I can to make your flight comfortable. There's no reason to be afraid. Not a reason in the world, not now. You'll see everything's going to work out perfectly. For all of us. <laughs>